first game established the LEGO Batman universe. The second expanded it into Justice League territory, while bringing several big changes to LEGO games at the same time. So what do we get when two years later, LEGO Batman starts out with the Justice League, but goes to outer space? Let's see with LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham for the Wii U. To draw the Dark Knight and Boy Wonder up to space, we have DC supervillain Brainiac start an invasion of Earth and other nearby planets. It's told in a similar way as LB2 as in it's intricate enough thanks to the elements taken from DC comic books, but still simple enough to keep the focus on LEGO fun. The presentation is much like the previous game, shiny HD graphics with good character animations and it all runs in a smooth frame rate. Along with music from the Batman 89 movie, plus some original music that sounds similar once again adding an epic scale to the game which of course matches the big bad guy plus outer space adventure story. Voice acting has also kept up its same quality with actors like Troy Baker, Clancy Brown, Tara Strong, and Nolan North all returning to give us some great DC dialogue. But I was kind of taken aback by some of the character voices because they went for more of the comedic satirical tone. Sorry, but this exit is closed due to extreme weather conditions. <laughs> Oh no, please don't revive that movie, especially when Arnold is right here. It's showtime. Arnold, don't you do it! Don't you do it! Let's kick some ice. Freeze well! What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Remind me to fire you after this review. You know you're lying. Well, LEGO Batman 3 keeps practically all the same gameplay mechanics that have been consistent since the first LEGO Batman game. This goes for the puzzles, some platforming, and simple combat with a lot of bad guys to beat up. But it makes some notable adjustments that improve the experience. The first one I noticed was that Batman and Robin can now access their various suits at any time from a suit wheel, much like Jason McCain changing his disguise in LEGO City. But this whole suit mechanic also extends to other heroes and villains like Cyborg, Lex Luthor, and the Joker. This is way more convenient than having to find the displays with different suits throughout a level, and it opens up gameplay earlier on than this game's predecessor. It's also nice to see this game make good use of the big figures to get more size accurate versions of Killer Croc and Solomon Grundy. But speaking of characters, there seems to be a lot more focus on DC characters outside of the Batman universe this time. In fact, there were quite a few levels with no Batman or Robin. For a game called Lego Batman, this may be a bit disappointing. Maybe this game should have been called LEGO Justice League or LEGO DC Super Heroes instead. Yet with all these characters, TT Games made an effort to flesh out all their abilities, including an actual scanner for one of Batman's suits and Martian Manhunter, the Flash's ability to build big things like a LEGO Movie Master Builder, Joker being able to control weak-minded people, or Martian Manhunter being able to change from big to small when needed. With so many additions though, there were some times that I got stuck on a puzzle all because I forgot one ability that was added to a character, so it could be a bit to keep track of. TT Games also fleshed out the hacking minigames. Here they're presented as these Tron-like 3D platforming maze games. Honestly, I like these better than the more 2D hacking minigames of DC Supervillains, which came out four years later. What actually works with the more 2D approach are these flight combat sequences. No, they don't hold a candle to the flight missions in Skywalker Saga, but this design actually makes them control better and thus be more fun than the ones in older LEGO games. Just a case of old school design benefiting a new school game. And you can rest assured that there's just as much destructive mayhem here as in all flight missions in LEGO games. What really stands out about this third game in the LEGO Batman series beyond the mechanical improvements is just how meta this whole game is. Now, most licensed LEGO games are inherently meta anyway, but this game goes out of its way to be meta not just for Batman or DC Comics for that matter, but for Warner Brothers as a whole. It's the only explanation I can think of for why Daffy Duck is guiding you through lantern planets and why there are Adam Wests at every level for you to save. Hello, Excellent. I'm TV's Rest Adam West. Back there. Uh, don't One day you might even become as great a legend as me. Adam West! Okay, that makes sense, especially when you see the game intentionally paying tribute to Batman from the 60s, but could someone tell me why Conan O'Brien is here explaining stuff? Oh. Maybe they should call this Lego Warner Brothers Properties. Admittedly, some of this does fit with the Lego charm, though. For one thing, Superman once again gets his John Williams music playing when he flies, but now Wonder Woman gets some of this too, as the game plays her TV theme from the 70s when she flies. That's how you know this game was made by Gen X DC fans. One thing that did bother me though was the change in approach to the open world aspect. 
Instead of one huge open world like LB2, you have several hub worlds that work like old school hubs, plus some open lantern planets you can explore in that true 3D way. But they only unlock when you get halfway through the story, which can take a while. Plus, while these planets do look nice, there's some good variety between them, and there's a decent number of things to do in them, they all feel smaller and more barren than Gotham and LB2. These are more like Super Mario Galaxy planets than a vibrant, living world, whereas LB2's Gotham had plenty of life even with all the chaos in it. This would have been better if the game came out before LB2 as a bridge between old school hubs and giant open worlds we know today, but alas, we have open worlds that feel rather lackluster. On one hand, LB3 tries some new things that work and embraces aspects from other Wii U LEGO games that make sense for this superhero game. But even with everything the game does well, it feels scaled down and cheap at the same time. So I'd only recommend purchasing this to people who are fans of DC Comics as a whole and not just Batman. Good news is that used copies of the Wii U version are surprisingly cheap right now, anywhere from $5 to $20. So if anything, it doesn't break the bank for DC fans who also love LEGO games to track down and buy the whole trilogy. But people who are just fans of Batman may want to stick to LEGO Batman 2 and DC Super Villains. Well, that's my review of LEGO Batman 3 for the Wii U. To help me produce more videos like this, please support my Patreon page. Special thanks to my current patrons here. Remember that supporting my Patreon gets their name in the credits and access to my flagship videos a full day early. Also be sure to check out my previous reviews of LEGO Batman for the Wii and LEGO Batman 2 for the Wii U. See you all next time!